Hey, we are live on day two of International Women's Week, um, which we were just talking before we went live about this gauntlet that is International Women's Week, where it's just suddenly, whoa, what are we all doing? Let's talk women, let's talk where everyone wants to talk women and talk to you. Um, but we're joined by two amazing humans, Jane Cunningham and Philip Roberts, um, authors of Brand Splaining, but they have authored other books. Um, and the founders, of, it's Pretty Little, what is it? Pretty Little, I just know it's PLH. PLH is fine. PLH Yeah, a big research, like the leading research consultancy, advising brands on women basically and how to work with women and connecting with women and not sort of dictate to women and that's part of the book it's an amazing book brand explaining that everyone everyone should buy whether whatever gender whatever industry and i just find it fascinating because it's so the sexism in everything that's marketed around us is so subtle a lot of the time and you don't notice it going on and one of the big things I loved is that change from when it's so obvious men telling us what to do and how to what we want and now actually going into sort of the savior mode where we think they've got our backs but actually now they're treating us a bit like victims and wanting to help us and be saviors um which you don't really notice I never really noticed that part you think oh they're helping us out we're all on side but actually that bias is still massively um there um but anyway just to start the whole choose to challenge theme this week is amazing and you what you guys do, have done with the agency and with the books is massively choose to challenge what is going on and what has happened for hundreds of years when it comes to you know selling brands advertising telling you know just there's always been brands for thousands of years so um why tell us why like why did you write it? What What is that fire in your bellies, both of you, that makes you want to go out there and choose to challenge? Well, we. I mean, I guess we've been we've been doing this for about fifteen years. So we wrote our first book fifteen years ago because we were working in agencies where advertising agencies and comms agencies where we had noticed that the treatment of female brands was very different to the treatment of male brands. So there wasn't as much interest or enthusiasm for the briefs that came into the agency that were tackling female products and female brands. And so we at the time had felt there had to be a sort of better way to do marketing for women. So we left our jobs, wrote a book. And I guess over the last 15 years, we've been so sort of lucky in some senses because we're in the market all the time researching women um, listening to, to them, discussing their lives, their hopes, their dreams, their purchase patterns, the brands that they like and the brands that they don't like. And over the course of that 15 years, there's actually been massive change in the female audience because you've had really big events like Me Too. You've had the growth of understanding around intersectionality, fourth wave feminism, all of those sort of big shifts and changes in female culture and female lives. Um, we've been sort of observing and I guess we felt that there was a, an opportunity um, given what we were hearing in our research which is that women didn't feel that marketing was moving as fast as they were moving there was an opportunity to do a sort of state of the nation okay what what does how much has marketing moved on since we started in the last 15 years um, and if it hasn't why hasn't it and is there a better way to do it a way that's much more aligned with the way women are now and much more I guess that gets rid of some of the diminishing behaviors that we think exists in marketing still, even as you say, they are sneakier and more under the surface than the, the very yeah. overt sexism that would have been around at the beginning. And what about you, Philippa? <laughs> well, I said, when, we, when we worked in agencies, we were always like really um, increasingly pissed off, I suppose, by the fact that it was always the male brands, particularly stuff to do with booze, and cars and tech that got all the creative interest and were kind of considered the, the high status accounts in the agency. Um, and then all the female only products always were treated in this it's like sort of sigh way. And they were always given to me and Jane to sort of look after <laughs> these, these accounts. And, uh, and I, I'm sure all that has changed now, but that was definitely the initial um, the initial sort of thing that was 
gave us the impetus to do something different was to try and prove that there was a different and more interesting way of doing it. And so that's what the, I guess that's why we started the uh, from the company, and then the and then the book just actually came about. I suppose to, uh, uh, again. A slightly annoyed feeling that the marketing, the advertising world was congratulating itself on having sort of invented this idea of femme empowerment and femme advertising and everything was all right in the world and weren't they sort of marvellous when in fact there was still a lot of things that were being done wrong and a lot of things that were being done in quite a sneaky way um, as well. So those, um, so again, trying to kind of expose and out that stuff we felt like it was an important thing to do to keep the thing moving forward. And that, and this is probably a good week um, to talk about it because, as you know, I said um, at the beginning that oh, that going into International Women's Week and running the gauntlet. Um, the one thing I love it and I hate it because there's, I just there's you get invites to do stuff and they're brands or that up, especially like city companies, and you know it's a token gesture. You know it. Yeah it's ticking it's ticking a box and I say no to that a lot of stuff because you know it's not genuine it's yeah not. yeah um so on that what have you found on that that new sneaky we're supporting you but we're not <laughs> we're not really um way that that of the kind of the savior the savior bit we're on side we're supporting you yeah. about the femme power but it's sort of the rescuer really yes yeah Yes, and there's definitely, I mean, it's always very interesting if you go onto brands' websites and read their mission statements, um, particularly female brands, because quite often that tells you a lot about what they believe about themselves and what they believe about the audience. And quite often, as you say, they take on this sort of slightly savior complex position where they feel they, they are somehow in a position to tell women, not, not as they used to, which is just telling women how they should look, but now also how they should how they should be and how they should act. So we would say quite a lot of that for empowerment stuff, which on the surface of it looks like it's on side with women. In reality is just telling women to fix themselves just in a slightly different way. So where they were sort of men in white coats telling us how to make our hair shinier, they're now shrinks telling us to be braver, be stronger, stop apologizing. Um, and it, it, feel, it feels like the same relationship is assumed, that the brand still assumes it's in charge of women, that it's there to tell women how to be and, and what to do. And it's interesting that it's never the other, it's never the other way around. So it's always, you know, if you take that campaign, which tells women to stop saying sorry, you know, nobody ever thought, well, maybe men should apologize more. It's always, if there's a difference between men and women, it's the women who must be wrong and we need to do something to fix them, to make them more aligned with the way men are. But maybe a male brand should get out there and start saying to men, hey, why don't you start apologizing when you when you fuck up? You know, why, why, yeah. why is it all the women, always the women who have to change their behavior? So um, that sort of sneaky stuff is still, is still present. And then, the, you know, there's, you know, also I guess there is just this sort of hypocrisy of the brands that are out there saying that we are all about femme powering and then, you know, a little bit of investigation into their supply chain or understanding what their pay gap is, which is often significant, will tell you that 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 maybe they're not so femme powering after all. And on the I'm going you feel quite conflicted about it in a way, don't you? Because you sort of think, oh well on one hand it's better than the old school stuff where you know where the sexism was so visible and obvious and therefore so wrong but but um but actually that sort of notion well as jane says the, the, the whole everything around the uh, sort of corporate feminism is is basically saying to women isn't it you you, you need to you know with the, the right amount of effort and the right amount of twisting yourself around and the right amount of fixing yourself you can kind of join in with this or or you, you need to change rather than ever looking at the, the system itself and what might what might need to change there it puts all the onus on the on the individual and that's where it is that's where it's very limited is that blaming them um, is, is that victim blaming isn't it that there's something there's something wrong with us that we're mm. the, you know, mm. it's like we need to but you get that across the board it's like you know Brunei, the, the bedding to board gym is something that i do the whole lot because it's that you're is they're apologizing and and 
to um, settling and not not speaking up and um, you're going to wear, you know, you're asking for trouble if you wear a short skirt, you're, you know, it's sort of, and in the workplace, it's like, oh, you know, apologize, having to, you know, apologize or, or say, well, we need to be, oh, it's my fault because I'm not confident enough. I'm yeah. Not, you know, I'm not asking oh, yes. for a pay rise, therefore it's my problem. It's not. Yeah. It's, I've got imposter yeah. syndrome. It's my problem. I've got a syndrome. <laughs> You know, it's just always cast in women as having some sort of condition, you know, which has made them inadequate in some way and, and therefore they need to be fixed. And it, it is, it, it's a very sort of, um, it's very diminishing, you know, and it's just another whole set of criticisms. You know, if before it was about you've got too many wrinkles or your hair isn't blonde enough, it's now you're not, you know, you're not leaning in enough. Yeah, exactly. You're not asking for it. It's all, yeah. yeah. It's, all, it's all, the onus is still all on us, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Um, Nobody's training businesses to, you know, provide women with a safe space in which they can ask for what they want. They're training women to behave in a way which they, well, don't seem to want to at the moment. So it's a very yeah. you seen, um, And then, you know, this year, we're coming up to a year now, and we were saying, you know, before we went live, the, there's a lot of anger. There's a lot of anger out there in women and the effect on it. Have you seen have you seen any shifts in the last year when it comes to brands or businesses or realizing what they're doing and wanting to shift? Or do you think it's sort of nothing's changed and actually it's going to take that anger to come out and change it? It's a bit too it's a bit too sort of early to call, but I mean a lot of brands are talking about a sort of reset for the for the new market, aren't they? And and having to recognizing that they need the world but the market will be very different and what we're hoping will happen which is what we saw beginning to emerge before everything um uh, seized up is is that that brands will focus on the kind of on uh, deeds not words and doing practical things to um to help the their female customers instead of this sort of narrative which is about telling them what they need to do. They will get on and, and do actually do stuff. And while we describe it in the book as you know, the move going from patron, which is where it is now, this messiah thing, into um, being a servant. So it's gone for the brand from being the master to the patron to the servant and getting on and serving women and working out what it is that they want and need and providing it rather than as you you know if we're just talking about saying oh well, the system doesn't need to change it's women that need to change so but brands have fixed the system and also i think because of the shop closures store closures i guess women have been sort of driven online more in order to make purchases and actually it's online and on the web where the woman-made brands as we describe them the direct-to-consumer brands which have been you know challenging the way things have normally been done in categories so whether that's um you know sanitary protection products or underwear products or even banking with the likes of starling bank you do have these direct-to-consumer brands that have disintermediated the big retailers and have allowed brands to have a conversation with women which is very female to female, which feels like women talking to women. And it's not to say that you have to be a woman made brand in order to pull that off and to do that well, but it's great to have that sort of inspiration out there so that brands can see what that means and what that looks like once you remove the sort of male gaze or the male glance out of the relationship and out of the way women get presented. You you end up in a very different, much more interesting place and much more relevant place for the way for the way women are now. Um, so yeah, do you think how much of that is do you think um it comes down to listening a lot of the time? I think that's a big yeah. thing, isn't it? That actually and also we do listen more. Yeah. On, on, you know what I mean? It's like we want to learn. I remember a tennis coach at school always saying he much preferred teaching girls because we listened. We listened, yeah. we followed instructions, we even the smallest ones, whereas boys just thought they knew it. They didn't yeah. want to listen. Yeah. They, yeah. That, and it probably it, that just goes through, doesn't it? They then become men, and we become women, and it's still we kind yeah. of all instruction and listen and, <clears throat> and yeah, um, yeah, and that's what men are taught to do, isn't it? They're taught to show that they know, not that they don't know. Um, so so inevitably that it you know that does play out in the way that they they do business and the way that brands 
when they're run by men end up having this conversation which is sort of talking down and talking at to women um but but we we also talk a bit in the book about this sort of obsession with big data you know over the last 10 years as well which has actually sort of replaced some of the more sort of intimate methods for discussing brands and marketing and communications with women like qualitative methods i guess and stuff that gives you kind of real insight at a contextual level. So you're not just saying, do you prefer this brand that says it's got my cellar water or do you prefer this one that says it's got some other thing, incomprehensible pseudoscience thing? You know, you're actually out there saying to women, so what do you, what do you need? What are you interested in? What are your lives like? And then out of that, you arrive at a, at a project solution, which is exactly what, um, you know, Glossier did, exactly what Anne Starling did with them, um, with with them and Bowden did with Starling and um, so you know the the one thing that those brands do better than other brands is that they properly properly listen either through social media or through those quite kind of intimate and small scale quality methods and that's better and, and, yeah, I guess they also they, they don't just they don't just listen they really hear um we, we, we used to work at the um um an age the, the agency that did Dove and 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 up into the sort of invention of Dove, there have always been this, um, women in research had always been saying, oh, why do the, they make, you know, s seem to set out to make me feel bad about myself and set up these completely unattainable and unrealistic definitions of, of what beautiful looks like. And they've been saying it for years and years in research. And, and but the response in the, marketing community can often be oh women always say that they always say that they don't really mean it they really what they really like is mm -mm -mm. and we um because that's basically our job is to go out and research with women all the time so we're always hearing what they what it is that they they are saying about what they want and quite often we get you know um in our debriefs they say oh yes well they do so the, yes they always do say that but it's how sort of seriously they take the listening once they've done it. And as you, you know, to the point you make, that it's not just a tick boxy thing that says, oh, yes, we've done that. We've we've listened and we'll just make, you know, but actually yeah, we properly, properly hearing. Yeah. Yeah, properly hearing. Because there is that, as you said, that you know, we've listened to them and they're always going to say that. But we know yeah. they're not, that's not right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like they're, yeah. Fine. they're always going to feel insecure about what they look like, but it's fine yeah. because we know what they really want, and so yeah. we'll, we'll exactly. do whatever we can. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> all we pretend is to listen. Um, yeah. Um, and on that, so on the like on the Dove one, because that because it also opens up the you know the the second wave, third wave of feminism and that. And I'm constantly, you know, battling it in you know, the other, my other business. And um, when it comes to the sexuality of that of that real cross and it's women as well two women of the nakedness the nudity the like owning it owning your body owning your shape advertising and underwear and there's that kind of that it's wrong that sexualizing women and there's the drop they go well they're empowered there it's mm. you know it's a bit of minefield on that so yeah. what in all your years is sort of yeah what are your yeah views on on that because it's just sort of Brand. So it's a funny thing, isn't it? Because it's it's quite subtle, isn't it? The, the sort of difference between when when we look at a photograph and we think that is male gaze, we can see that that's set up to to please, you know, to please the male the male eye versus the imagery, which we can tell is it feels like it's a woman looking at a woman rather than. A man looking at a woman and I suppose because so many directors and so many photographers and so many creatives and agencies are men it's almost inevitable that the presentation of women in or out of their underwear you know appears to be somehow sexualized um so or, so or, or sorry or, or just male pleasing generally not necessarily just sexualized, but just in male cast in male pleasing roles. Yeah, or I get it. If they're, they're, yeah, they're directing and they're, they're the ones doing it. It's sort of they will be seeing it in a in that in the male in the male gaze. And actually, you can tell. Let's see what you mean. And you can tell. You see some ads, and even like the Dove, 
for for example you could you could look to that and thought that's not that's not being done to sexualize women it's not being done for no. that's being done for women to look at it and go do you know what there's nothing wrong with me and it doesn't yeah. matter yeah. what shape you're owning it and yeah and it's very interesting it looking at life and, sorry you go phil no, I was just going to say that there, that there it is changing um, that that sort of um, that the, 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 that tone and that voice is definitely changing, and there has been a a, a shift, and we are seeing it quite a lot to be for brands feeling that they can be more spoke, outspoken and want to be more um, outspoken. Have you seen that that fr uh, Freedom Mom um, campaign about breastfeeding? Which yeah, is very, um, yeah. yeah, really, really amazing. And there's this a, a Tommy Tippy thing as well, which is sort of in the same vein. And there's loads of stuff in in um, in feminine hygiene, as it used to be called, that is much more kind of full on and outspoken. So it, it is, it is, cha it is, it is changing. Maybe not as fast as women are changing, but it is changing a bit. And Becoming the idea more, um, unapologetic, isn't it? I always say yeah. that. It's that we had said there was on on yesterday. Tonya Buxton, a TV chef, and her daughters, and um, one of her daughters has just got a first. So beautiful. She's got a first. Um, don't know why I said that first. But she's got a first in a maths degree. She's so smart, but she is also beautiful. Um, and owns it, and you know, is confident. And she was talking about applying for jobs and interns, and whether she needs to make her social media private because there's like big beach pictures and it's just sort of you know there were two it's mm. kind of what she's really in a, in a really tricky not one knowing how whether she needs to downplay that to, yeah and I, there's, there's all you know there's being unapologetic and owning it and if you want things to change the ones that judge you on that yeah and don't want you to work for them you don't want to work for them anyway it's yeah you, it takes you know it takes real courage and confidence yeah. to be unapologetic and yeah. go this is who I am and I think as a parent it's very difficult isn't it because you're always you, you know you you the world isn't the way you want it to be and you don't want to put your children in a position where you know they feel they're gonna you, you feel you know they might be in danger in some way you know so you you say don't walk down that street where you know of course they should be able to walk down whatever street they want you feel very it's very compromising isn't it that you have to say that's not a good idea to do that. I know it's not fair, but that's just the way it is right now. Yeah, my mum's done um, that. Too. Are you sure yeah. you want to be doing that? What will people yeah. think? My like, mum, I'm way past that now. I'm way past. <laughs> <laughs> but I think young younger women are much more are much louder and much more much bolder than than their kind of older cohorts. I mean, much more able to hold their their own. Much less likely to question themselves. I think. Um, and that you know they've got much much more sort of positive influence in that respect than probably you know the the older generations have had. Of course, they have the equal and opposite pressure from social media, which is you know the the need to be perfect and you know the airbrushing and you know trying to change yourself all, all the time in order to fit some sort of ideal. Um, but on balance, better than better than it is worse probably. Because that's a bit of a jumping position. Sorry, you go, Phil. Okay. Well, just just, just going to say that also at the at the older age groups, quite interesting as well. That the older women we're definitely um, hearing in our research are much bolder and more um, outspoken and rebellious, and um, you know, not feeling that they've got to be all kind of agreeable and pleasing in a way which probably their their mums. Did, that sort of boomer audience of older women yeah. are, are, are doing a really good job at yeah, as, um at, yeah, at, we're, at, seeing, we're seeing that in the yeah. kids world well, we're seeing oh, that yeah. Yeah. like for, uh, yeah like sort of 40s 50s women yeah. just coming out and they might have been you know in a shitty marriage 10 years or they've lost identity and they're like no do you know what this is who we are we've had three kids our bodies are like this we've got you know yeah. we're financially independent and actually this is our time it's a real yeah, yeah. yeah demographic that's growing fast yeah. in our membership. <laughs> like, good. yeah and that, that, that thing about it's my time now having put you know have to be very others focused for so long and and now kind of women stepping into their own it's really it's really really marked 
we think. Yeah, have you seen in, in your research, because you cover like all industries and everything, because I see I've seen sort of a big boom in that, in the kind of, um, you know, the menopause, menopause, yeah. like mm -hmm. tech and femme health and everything going on. Yeah. Is that actually that? No, we can't. It is a thing. It's been, especially in the workplace. It's, yeah, you know, actually. We should be able to talk about it. We should, all those yeah. issues. Um, yeah. yeah. And that's, oh, that's definitely really fast, hasn't it? Because even actually when mm. we set out, yeah. started writing the book, we were one of the first big sort of sections that we were going to be talking about was the menopause and how that was completely sort of silent and overlooked by um, brands and audiences. And actually by the time we came to write that bit of the book, which was, you know, six months later or whatever, there are quite a few brands who are doing things in in that space so that seems to be moving really fast as you say both sort of uh to the to the to the market but also within within companies a recognition of how how disruptive and difficult that can be and it is the old, and older women you're seeing you know like cindy gallup does a lot of now ages them and gets you know, yeah throws loads of toys out of prams all the time yeah. i love her on um, yeah. on and on, on that as well in you know in brands marketing is that are they being more open of actually not putting women on a shelf from like 45 and going actually it doesn't matter what they yeah. want it's kind of the la it's still it's the last sort of um really 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 stuck bit in marketing is the is the 50 plus audience i mean only six percent of people who work in marketing are over 50 and the same is true in in advertising agencies and so you know the impulse is always to create communications and brands for yourself i suppose and you understand yourself better than you understand other audiences um, but it's a real missed opportunity and actually, you know, commercially negligent. You know, CEOs should be saying to their teams, why aren't you looking at the 50 plus female audience? Because they're really wealthy, they're happy, you know, they're at the what they would consider to be the sort of zenith of their lives really at that age. And they have huge spending power. You know, why why are brands not addressing them? I and mean, when only one in 10 ads that shows a woman has a woman over 50 where they make up about 40 percent of the population this kind of real underrepresentation, um and those needs i guess there are specific needs like menopause but also kind of fashion and beauty which go completely unmet because the 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 communication is always about how do you look younger how do you be younger and actually for women that age that's not what it's about they're really enjoying being the age that they are <laughs> and it's about making the most of it and being constructive about that rather than saying hey how can we make you look you know 10 20 years younger that's not not yeah, much of interest most, most women i know that i uh over 40 are more confident than, than they've yeah. ever been like, you know me post three kids i'd quite happily run around naked if i had to whereas in my 20s no chance yeah yeah <laughs> so, yeah it's exactly right it's exactly right and that again is this sort of male gaze on women isn't it is the the idea that once you're over 50 you're sort of redundant in some respects as far as um certainly younger men are concerned and therefore you're invisible you just disappear you can dissolve off into sort of grayness metaphorical or literal you know because you're yeah. of no you're of no use anymore whereas of course those women are having the, literally the time of their lives you know we talk about this sort of bell curve you know this image you know that 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 seems to get played out in marketing where sort of marriage and children is the zenith and everything leading up to it is the you're sort of preparing to secure the patronage of the male in the marriage and having the children and everything afterwards is this terrible sort of awful decline and and you know, no, and then you talk to women and they say no it's like that and goes up <laughs> that's where it just gets better and better and better you know the older you get the more you throw off all of those insecurities and self-consciousness and you throw off all the responsibilities and um there's sort of um yeah the huge number of hours that women spend looking after other people suddenly um suddenly dissipates and they can look after themselves and enjoy themselves why not that's target right. them no. Yeah, why not target them? It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah, that's what you, gets um, me angry. That's what gets me angry. There it is. The um the big is basically there is around you've got ten you've got ten principles of how you know what everyone's brand should look at and how they should operate. So just go while we um finish here, what would you say like each of you? What's kind of a main what be your main takeaway for brands watching or anyone anyone watching um that you found that's in there? 
I think we would say that you go, you go, Phil. Sorry, I'll talk. No, 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 you go, no, you go, um, Well, I think we would say, we would say that bell curve thing and seeing audience, female audiences through that male gaze thing and that and female life as a bell curve and at each stage, you know, trying suggesting to women that they could, should put be the sort of perfect version of that thing at each each stage is the thing that is so destructive and is the thing that's so old fashioned and is the thing that kind of keeps um keeps brands talking and telling women what they are and what they should be so i guess the place we always start is is a kind of smashing up the bell curve that place and saying look just to let to see the audience as they as they are on their terms, not through all these male gaze, male glance, male pleasing um, lenses. And when you look there, when you start there and you look there, you just see such many things that are so much more interesting, so much more positive, so much um, more, you know, so many more opportunities for ideas and innovation and creativity. So starting, smashing up the bell curve is a good place to start nice what about you jane yeah no i agree with that and i mean i guess as part of that it is kind of genuinely asking and listening and hearing what it is that women say are their aspirations you know so in the in the study that we did we kind of had a whole kind of battery of aspirations we asked women about and the things that they want are financial security to be able to travel to live life in their own terms to feel comfortable in their own scary very bottom of the aspirations are things like um being able to give up my job when i have children and um, having financial security even if i'm dependent on someone else that this sort of sense of independence and wanting to be independent of that of that um need for to please other people i guess is really fundamental to women and so brands that sort of help them do that and that kind of put themselves in a position that where they sort of realize they're in service of that aspiration rather than in charge of telling women what they should be or what they should hope for is has got to be the, the a good place to start yeah i mean i would say to people you've got to be selfish and people are often looking at me what do you mean that because to women if you tell someone to be selfish you no it's if you don't if you're not putting you first yeah and, you know being selfish and working out what makes you tick and what you want and how are you yeah. going to be happy and actually i think as women you just you lose that yeah because you know, you're putting everyone else first around you and worrying about what everyone else wants and actually when you go well what do you want yeah they will sit there and go well i don't know what i want because no one's ever asked me what i want and yeah. i don't know about Think about and what I thought I about it, yeah, exactly. And it's such and that's, that's such terrible role modeling for children, isn't it? Because that's sort of you know, perfect mom, you know, saying I put everybody's needs ahead of mine, and then you're saying to your girls, be a good girl, be like me, because what it's about is putting yourself second. That's what good looks like. I mean, it's it's a it's a it's a terrible role modeling, I think, for for girls, and just leads them down the path where they do just continually, as you say, think that their job is to please other people rather than to please themselves. Yeah, you've got a big, there's a big, big at the beginning of your book about the good girl, con yeah, which everyone yeah. should look up because it's fascinating, yeah. About, yeah, being the good girl. Um, but you know, we're going to end, we're going to end there. Thank you so much. Thank um, you. Emma. Fascinating. And we, it's something you can talk for hours and hours, but that, everyone should go out and get it, brand explaining. Um, it's amazing and really easy to read and really funny as well. I don't like boring books, I like funny. <laughs> funny books. Um, so yeah, so thank you. And um, oh, happy, international so Week. happy International Women's Week. Happy International Women's Week. Thanks for having us.